how do you balance that? I mean, I want there to be peace, mm -hmm. and yet mm -hmm. that has to be up to them. Right. I mean, I think that we have to acknowledge that mediators do have views. We are not either spineless right. nor neutral in that we don't have a particular view. Mm -hmm. And I think that mediators are making judgment calls all the time right. about whether, whether they should be engaged, uh, whether the timing is right, whether, for example, imagine you, you uh, here's a case, a family case. Mm -hmm. It's a divorce. The woman has been in an automobile accident, has a brain injury, has difficulty dealing with numbers. She's negotiating with her husband about the financial settlement. Mm -hmm. Does the mediator just go and say, you got to represent yourself, it's two adults? Or does the mediator say, you know what, I'm not sure that you have the capacity in this particular area to adequately advocate for your interests. Wouldn't it be better to have someone who will work with you to help you think this through? And to talk to the husband and say, you know, if you're looking at for an agreement that's ultimately fair, mm -hmm. that's going to be durable, mm -hmm. that's not going to damage what little relationship maybe you have left, would this be a good idea? If he says no, would I as a mediator continue? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think that it would be it would lead to a fair or durable mm -hmm. settlement, which basically deals with a basic principle of self-respect, mm -hmm. human dignity, and people being able to really adequately represent their interests. But you would be willing to go ahead with that if she had oh, absolutely. somebody there absolutely. to work absolutely. with her. Absolutely, sure. Yeah.